and welcome back. So if you've been following along and you've done your homework, you should be in this position right now, uh, where you have all of your clothing uh, lined up with your Uma, you're happy with the position, uh, you've maybe got the odd bit of poke through from the underlying mesh, but we're not worried about that, that's going to disappear in Unity. Um, if you have the talent to model your own clothes, then this is probably the starting point you're going to go from if you want to turn your clothing into um, Uma slots. So uh, let's go through the process. Again, I'm not going to lie to you, it's very quick to get results out of this. However, it takes a little bit of fiddling and messing around, uh, and basically time, to get really good results. So we're going to have a look at both points in that little workflow. So let's get cracking. Um, I'm going to start with the trousers here. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. Um, so let's just switch off the visibility of everything else. And we've just got the trousers visible. Um, and we're rocking the Kylo Ren look there. Excellent. Um, and in fact, before I start working on these trousers, I'm going to just switch them off and I'm going to put a little bit of animation into our character, just into this leg to prove to myself that the uh, the rigging's working. Um, so you might want to spend a bit more time making a more stressful animation. Um, but I'm just going to do something pretty simple. So down at the bottom in the timeline here, First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to switch on my bone rig so I can see it. So shift click on to the bones. Um, I'm going to head over into the hierarchy and select my rig. And uh, in the avatar panel here, I need to make sure that pose position is active. And we're on octahedral and also on x-ray. So x-ray lets us pick the bones. You can view these however you want, stick, b-bone, all of these different options. But for me, uh, I find octahedral makes things easy to select. Now, at the moment, if I try and select a single bone, it won't. It will only select the entire rig. In order to move and alter bones, I need to be in pose mode. So I'm going to select that rig. I'm going to switch over here into pose mode. Now I have access to individual bones. So we're going to do some animation. Um, there is actually some animation in this uh, character as it stands, and it's all facial stuff. Uh, let me just turn X-Ray back off, and if I uh, press play down here, you can see we've got some facial animation goes on. Yep, that's going to be useful later on, but uh, I'm just going to scrub my slider back over here, and we can do that by holding the right mouse button. I'm going to take that over to the very far left there. Okay, <clears throat> let's put X-Ray back on. Um, to get our animation to stick, uh, I'm going to change my key mode to rotation, because I'm, as I'm sure you know, when we're animating humanoids, we should only animate rotation. There shouldn't be any uh, position changes. And I'm going to switch on auto key here. So this will automatically record keys for bones that I move. So I'm going to use the right mouse button to move over to uh, time frame 10 or frame 10. And I'm going to hit rotate and just rotate this leg bone up. Okay, let's have a little look. Yep, I like that. And again, if I scrub my slider holding the right mouse button down, that's now part of my animation, which is great. So, again, let's do something with this lower leg just to bend the knee. And I'm going to do the same with the foot. And there we go. Let's scrub that. Okay, so that's a pretty natural movement. It's something we're going to get when we're walking. Okay, so that's something I can test my uh, Uma out with, or my clothing out with. So I'm now going to turn off Auto Key because I don't want to record anything else. I'm going to hold Shift and turn off my Bone Rig. And I'm also going to pop back into Object Mode. So ah, notice how it didn't do that. You can't change your Selection Mode if the layer you're working on isn't visible. So I've switched the bones back on, then I'm turning back into object mode, switching them back off. Something you've got to watch out for in Blender. You'll find that a lot. If you've got your bones on a hidden layer and you try to pause, you can't do it. You have to have them visible. Okay, so let's uh, add these trousers back into the scene. And yep, let's start actually transferring the weights across.
Now, if you remember, we converted these from a fully rigged uh, character, and we stripped a lot of these extra features off. So our Uma human male, the actual mesh here, has uh, a mesh, it has a modifier, which connects it to the rig, and it also has a set of vertex groups. Again, if we just quickly look in there, here's these vertex groups, and they are collections of vertices on that mesh, and a list of the bones that those vertices connect to. It, it's really quite simple the way this works. If we look at our um, trousers, you can see there are no vertex groups, so these aren't assigned to any named bones. So that's what we're going to change. We're going to transfer the weights from our body over to the trousers. Now, because the vertices aren't the same, uh, Blender's going to very kindly project out and find the nearest vertex so it'll all just work auto magically really simple process first thing we need to do we need to select our uh, our actual body that has the weights on already we then need to shift select our trousers which is going to receive the weights okay so from there we need to switch into weight painting mode and from here we could start painting weights for different bones, but I'm not going to touch that. I'm actually going to scroll down the panel to the very bottom and hit transfer weights. Now what this will do, you'll notice it transfers all of the weights over, projected from the right hand finger 402. Um, that's actually just the first bone that it found, and it will have no influence whatsoever on those trousers. What we need to do is transfer all of the vertex groups across very easy to do we just head over here into the options and select the source layer and change that to by name and that will pick every named vertex group now it doesn't look like anything's happening in fact if you say uh, look at this right leg up or right up leg you would expect to see some weights on there but there aren't and this is a little preview into how uh, the Uma skeleton works this right leg up is a leg which we will use to animate however uh, the skinning all happens on the adjust bones so any bone that has adjust on the end is what will have weights on it so easy way to find them we're going to scroll to the top and you can see here left up leg adjust and there we are there's the weights for that upper leg again let's have a look down at the left leg so you can see they've all transferred across brilliant so i'm going to nip out of weight painting mode back into object mode and this should work in fact if we sent this across to unity right now these would work because these vertex groups have been applied to it however in uh, blender we can actually have several rigs in the screen at once several characters and blender doesn't know which bone rig is controlling these vertex groups yep and if you remember, we can see on these pants now, look, there's the vertex groups. But if you remember, there was a little spanner icon in here originally, just like in our human male. And that is a modifier which tells this mesh which rig to look at. So again, if we look at the human male and look at his modifiers, you can see here this armature modifier is telling the mesh to look at this Uma male rig. So if we animate now, because that isn't in our pants, if I uh, scrub across with the slider, it doesn't seem like it's worked at all. However, if we add that modifier, so add armature and tell it to look at this Uma male rig, now it will be reading those bones and it will deform correctly. And there we go. Now, that is a little bit rough, but to be honest, I think you'd get away with that. That looks pretty good to me. Might need a little bit of tweaking in behind the knee here, but we'll have a look at that later. And that really is it. You have your first uh, set of weights transferred. Now, I waffled a lot through that, so let's do another one and show how quick that actually is. So let's look at the shoes. They're a nice, simple one. So turn the shoes on. I select the body. Shift, select the shoes. Okay switch into weight paint mode and down at the bottom transfer weights if we just check the mesh properties you'll see this time it's transferred all of the weights across that's because it's remembered me changing this source layer setting brilliant back out of weight paint mode into object mode they will work now however to make them work in blender we need to add this modifier so let's 
make sure we've got the shoes selected go to the modifier panel add an armature and select our mail rig now when I scrub using the right mouse button the shoes come with it this is easy isn't it <laughs> let's have a look at the rest of it so we'll have a look at the torso again select the body select the torso weight paint mode transfer weight add back into object mode and finally with the torso we need to add the modifier put an armature on there and select our male rig now I haven't got any animation to actually show this so let's add a, an animation to this let's show our bones again let's um, switch into pose mode yeah I actually need to select the rig for that so select the rig into pose mode brilliant turn auto key on and let's again let's scrub across to um, timeline position 10 and I'm going to just make some adjustments to this one here yeah that looks good let's scrub that so you can see immediately that we have this working okay um, let me just uh, switch back into object mode hide my bones one thing you'll see here I'm not happy with straight away is this uh, whether it's a bulletproof waist jacket or whatever it is it stretches a lot when I actually move that and also we've got some of this fake arm that I left behind inside still poking out and actually um, it's very very easy to fix these sort of things in retrospect in blender uh, whereas other more expensive packages well everything's more expensive than free isn't it um, I find it modifying a mesh after you've rigged it to be a complete pain in the backside but it's very very easy in blender so let's not worry about that for now um, and finally let's stick these shades on oh there's gloves as well isn't there so let's quickly do those so select the body select the gloves or shift select the gloves uh, into weight mode transfer weight back into object mode add a modifier armature and connect up our rig again test it lovely see wristbands moving and finally let's have a look at these shades so unhide them select the body shift select the shades weight paint transfer weight back to object mode and add our armature great so that's everything rigged this would work this would work right now so you could move straight on to the next video don't because a couple of things I want to show you we're briefly going to have a look at weight painting and modifying uh, pre-rigged mesh to get rid of these extras that are inside so um, first thing we'll do let's get rid of these extra polygons which are hiding up these sleeves and as you can see they show through you can see them there when we actually do some animation no big deal let's fix it for this I'm going to turn off my uh, human male rig so I can actually see the body again look you can see that much clearer what's happening in there now Ugh, no good so I'm going to pick my torso mesh hit tab to enter edit mode um, you can see I'm in see-through mode here uh, I don't want to be let's switch to front surface mode I'm going to circle select these faces around here that I can see again escape rotate round just so I can circle select these back faces too get all of those and I'm going to hit on the keyboard oh, escape um, I tell you what something I'd forgotten to do is start my display mode up bear with me one second while I just position that nicely for you there you go so you can see what I'm doing um, so once we've got those selected, I'm going to hit H on the keyboard to hide those polygons. And that lets me see these nasty, sneaky little polygons that I don't want. So again, I'm going to uh, select these guys using circle select. Um, oh, didn't want that one, did I? Make sure I shift select those to get rid of them and I think there's a couple more in there so I'm going to pick those two lovely so I've got all of those I can hit delete 
and delete those faces and finally alt h to unhide the polygons i'd used that does not affect the uh, animation in any way or the rigging if you look now that's all fixed and it hasn't affected anything um, i've always had trouble doing that in max but works beautifully here so i'm going to do the same over this side let's speed this up a little Okay, a few more polygons than I wanted them, not too fussed, because we're not deleting them, we're just pressing H to hide them, which will then let me select all of this stuff that I didn't want. Uh, again, I'm going to go in see-through mode and use my circle select here to make sure I get everything without having to rotate around. So again, escape, circle select, see-through mode back on. Let's delete those faces, and again, Alt H to unhide everything. and press A to remove my selection. Great, so we've now tidied up a rigged mesh, removed and modified polygons. So that's a bit nicer. And let's put our human male back. So when we see that, we saw that before, nothing naughty poking through. Um, there is a little bit of the actual character poking through, and this is some weight painting issue that I need to fiddle with, but yeah, that's not the end of the world. Again, weight painting issue here. I think one of the biggest weight painting issues is with the glasses because that will have picked up all of the bones on that face. So when I scroll across, it's hilarious, but we now get all of his expressions reflected on his glasses. Um, hmm. You might want that if it's a superhero mask, but uh, this isn't. I want them to be static. So let's have a look at fiddling with the weights on this. So a little bit of manual weight painting here. Let's select our glasses and go into weight paint mode. Now, um, we need to also be able to see our mesh data so we can pick which uh, vertex group we're actually painting for. So anywhere on the head, let's, I tell you what, there's a lot of them to look through here. This is where this search bar here becomes really handy. So if I were to look for something related to the head, I could just start typing here and it will filter out. And there we go, head adjust. It will filter out all the bones or the uh, vertex groups which begin with these letters. So you can see there the head adjust, which is the one I really want to control on this. Um, it's only got a small amount of weight around here. And I can guarantee the rest is the eyebrows and the eye positions, which I don't want. So I'm going to paint this out. Now, it's very tempting to think if I went up to, I want one, which is 100% weight on here, and painted that with 100% weight, um, to think that would just work. Blender's strange. Um, most packages will only let any vertex have weights from bones that add up to one. Um, Blender will let you have a full 100% influence from several bones on a vertex. And what it does, rather cleverly, is it averages that out. Um, not what we want here. I want to absolutely say no other bone should be affecting this apart from this head adjust bone. So what I'm going to do, and it's quite easy to fix, is to say auto normalize. And again, if you hover over, you can see the tooltip tells you it will only allow bone weights to add up to one. So by clicking this, if I paint head adjust with that weight of one, Again, I'm going to put it in see-through mode so that I can do the back of the glasses at the same time. Okay, I can paint all the way along here. Just to show you, let's turn see-through mode off and paint this side. Okay, and everything looks great. Let's just turn off um, the male himself and just have a look around the other side. And you can see when I was in see-through mode, that went right the way through, whereas when I wasn't, uh, it didn't actually carry those weights through to the back faces so just wanted to show you how useful that tool can actually be so now those lenses of the glasses have a full weight auto normalized has made sure that nothing else has any influence on them so what we should see now let's go back out into object mode is if I right click and scrub none of those expressions come through onto his glasses which is superb exactly what I want okay um, one other thing I don't particularly like 
if we look at this uh, I mentioned this stretching that goes on here there's a vertex that's not picked up the weight again I don't really like that at all so um, what I'm going to do I'm going to stop the arm influencing this area here so pick my torso I'm going to look at my vertex groups and see if I can get arm mm, we want left arm adjust is it let's head into the weight paint mode and see if we can find what we're after so left arm adjust that's this one I think the shoulder might have something to do with it as well but let's see what's happening here okay we can see these vertices being stretched I'm going to set the weight to zero I'm going to paint across here and we should see some actual movement going on let's just go back into object mode and can you see now how this isn't moving at the front anymore I've still got something going on at the back there so again I'm going to don't like that so I'm going to just paint around here and make sure that this area here doesn't have any weight on it from the arm so again I could just go around and stop that arm having any influence again I'm doing this very quickly just to show you how you can do this but you can see I'm a little bit happier with that and needs a little bit more adjustment I think the shoulders involved here as well but let's not worry about that so, but you can see basically how you can start messing with vertices and clean up your animation again it's it all depends how close you're going to be and what you're going to fiddle with um, some areas uh, to pay attention to are under the arm um, this is its own special kind of hell I will let you enjoy that um, you will drive yourself insane trying to get that perfect good luck <laughs> But uh, again, it's all about compromise. What looks good, how close are you actually going to be? Um, yeah, what's it going to look like? Another thing that we have is I like to have a good look around the neck and see how the weights are on here because uh, you can get a, some really weird twisting goes on if you don't smooth these weights out and make them look a bit nicer. But effectively, what that uh, will do will allow you to put all of these uh, weights and just tidy them all up and get them all right and to your liking again use this animation area here to twist and move the bits that you want to check out um, trust me it's worth it spending the time here rather than getting something into uh, unity and into it and then finding your vertices moving a way that you don't want so take your time get this right and I will see you in the next episode and once again I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible uh, if you would like to support me feel free to click that link at the end of the video thank you very much and I'll see you next time